so now what we can want let's come here and we can go to this index and here we are here in the app.js i'm going to import the navigation bar because navigation bar is going to be in every single page so let's import the navigation bar i'll say internal import and this nav bar is coming from our component component dot slash component slash index so this is our nav bar somebody come here and paste here so our nav bar is set if we save and come back to the application you can see we have our nav bar and the home things are looking good to me come back to our code editor so we are done with the setups so this looks pretty fine close this one and now we can go back to the component and we can start with navigation first click on this nav bar go to this navbar.jsx and let's start writing some jsx so first thing we have to import couple of things from react so it's gonna be use state use effect and use context although we're not going to use this use context right now but it's better to import it because this use context will need when we'll use the react context for sharing the data okay for the, our state management so just follow along with me we have this three thing from react let's import the image that's coming from next and import the link so these are the three external import and let's do a couple of internal imports so import internal and we need to import the style file for the navigation bar and we have to import the images so that's how i'm importing the image i'm importing the entire image folder and that's the image i have and now i have to import the component which i'm going to use so i need to use model and i'm going to use the token list component and that's coming from the index actually we are in the component folder so it's coming from the index file as well so these are the two components we are using in the navigation bar looks good to me so we have our internal and external import let's come down and here let me take the menu all together we are displaying three menu so let's take menu item it's gonna be an array arrow of object so the first one is going to be name so i'll say swap the second is link and let's come down simply replicate this three times because we'll have three pages and this will say mm, tokens and this will say pools so we have to add a lot of functionality we want to make it 100 percent decentralized like a uniswap no centralized authority going to provide any transactions everything would be done all through the smart contract and the blockchain so i'm really excited because it took me a lot of time to design the entire architecture of this application to explain you in an easier way and to teach you more concept and how you can build your own so that's the entire menu we have for our navigation let me give this comment use state and here i'm going to take a use state and this will call let's say open model initially it would be false so that's the model we have take another use state and this will call open token box false so that's the external that's the internal and these are the use state we have so we are done with the setup and now we can start working on the j6 part so we come here remove this one take a div it will have a class called style dot navbar and that's how we're going to assign the style because we are using nextjs and in nextjs this is how you have to denote your style classes you have to use the style keyword and you can call the class name so navbar i believe that this is nothing new to all of you the same structure we have followed in our nft marketplace in our chat application in our ico so let's take another div it will have a class called style dot navbar dash box in that we're going to take another div it will have a class called style dot navbar dash box left inside that we're going to take another div it will have a class called dash navbar box right actually i remember that i have put inside the left so simply do one thing select this cut and bring it up and paste here so here we're going to say left this one is right so let's save it and let's have a look in the browser you can see everything is working fine we have left and right and home so things are looking good let's come back here and we're going to remove this and we're going to write some code in our left section first so first we're going to take a div it will have a class called style 
dot nav bar box image lift image and we'll have the image source image uni swap and we'll have this old logo we'll have this width 550 and height 50 so that's how the image would look like so that's the image we have let me give this comment because it's very important that you should always provide comment in your jsx part that what the jsx stand for so we have the logo let's bring this down we'll take the menu items and here i'm going to take a div it will have a class called navbar box left menu and that we're going to have the menu we have our menu items we're going to use this map element i and we want to instantly return this one we'll take a link tag and so we have imported this link tag that's look good let's bring this down and we'll take the key i plus one we'll take the href and we'll say path dollar sign template literal and we have to provide the name so element dot name so we have the name and we have to send the query as well so in the query we're going to send this element dot link which we have so that's our link look fine so far now in this we're going to take this p tag and it will have a class it will have a class called navbar box left menu item and in that we're going to display the menu itself so link dot name and in that we have the name of the item looks good to me everything's looking fine if we come here in the application you can see we have our swap token and pool if you click on this our router is also working fine we can easily able to redirect to the token page which we don't have that's why you can see 404 click on this token we don't have this one click on pool we don't have that one so simply come here remove this one reload the browser remove this and hit enter and we are back so our router is also working absolutely perfect things are looking good so far we have all these menus let's come here and now we can start working in the middle section in the search bar so let's come here we let me try this right section and actually we need to have a middle section so what i can do i can simply type middle and i can replicate this one and this will become middle i have to change the name of the class middle and let's start working in the middle section it's actually going to be the search bar so right now we are just building the layout but we're going to add the functionality to so the user can search the tokens we'll take a div it will have a class and the class name we want to provide navbar box middle dash search inside that we're going to have a div it will have a class called navbar box middle search dash image in that we will take the image tag next yes and we have to provide the source and this image is coming from the images which we have imported inside that images we have the search images okay we made a default export that's why we can easily able to use in this way we have to provide the alt name search width is going to be let's say 20 and height is going to be 20 so looks pretty good so far let's come here we have to provide the input section and here we're going to take a input normal input it will have type and type is going to be text we have to provide the placeholder and it will say search token so we have our input or we have our images things are looking good to me let's come down let's start working on the right section so this section is going to be pretty huge so let's start working straight away Click, remove and we'll take a div it will have the class we'll say navbar box right box inside that we're going to take a div it will have a class called style navbar box write box and it will say let's say image in that we're going to have image we have to provide the source is ether all tags network and we have to provide the height so height is going to 30 and width is going to be 30 as well we'll come down we'll take a p tag and in that we're going to type the name so we're going to do this hard code for the time being network name but we're going to make this dynamic so that's the right section and right section is also divided into section we'll take a button and it will have a on click function and so right now we don't have the function so let's make an empty function and we want to give the name to this button let's call it address for the time being 
so that's the burden we have so everything's looking good so we have the search icon we have the import we have the ether logo network address and home things are looking good so far now what we can do is let's come here and we're going to take the dynamic block because we have to show the logging option so we have to show the metamask connect wallet so user can click and connect so let's take a open model so this is the use state we have already taken and we have to say that if open model is true then we have to display this component if it's false then we have to hide this component so we'll use this model and in that we have to send couple of props so set open models because in the model section we have to we will have a button which will hide this model so that's why we are using this set open model we'll say set open model and we have to set the connect wallet function as well but right now we don't have so for the time being i just simply send this text message string so that's the model for connecting from the wallet that's one model we have which we have to build let's come here and now we have to work on the token list component in which we're going to list all the token which user have in his wallet so let's come here and we're going to take this open token box if it's true then only we want to display this component so here we're going to call the component and in this we're going to pass couple of data couple of props so the first prop we have to pass the token data exactly that how many tokens we want to render so the token data itself so right now we don't have the token data so let's pass a string hey now we have to send the props because we want to close this model as well so let's send the props for that as well that looks good to me so these are the complete jsx part for writing this entire navigation so this is the external this is the internal we have this is the navigation menus we have this is the use state we have and this is the entire jsx part we have written so this is the logo section this is the entire menu section this is the middle sections right sections and the moral component and the token list component so hope everything is clear so far to all of you so i believe that you guys have understood whatever we have done so far in our nav bar and now what we can do we can start styling the navigation bar straight away so let's come here go to this navbar module.css let's make it side by side so you guys can see what we are working and what we are exactly styling so whatever jsx we have written so far that's how it's looking on the browser and now we're going to turn it something beautiful so we have our navbar and we're going to assign the width is 90 percent we have to assign the margin to ram and auto so we'll have some space from top and bottom and we have to target the navbar box and we have to assign the display grid grid template column repeat three one of our because we're going to divide the entire navigation in three part first the left hand side the second one is the middle section and the third one is the right hand side we have to assign the align item is going to be center so that will keep everything in the center justify content is going to be let's say space between so all the three section will have space from each other we have to assign a gap so one ram so that's how it will look i know that's looking quite weird but we're going to make it something beautiful come down we have to target the nav bar box left and let's make it display flex we have to provide a gap for ram and we have to provide the align item center that's how we look come down left menu let's say display is going to be flex a line item center gap is going to be two ram so that's how it will look looking pretty good now let's come here we have to target the left menu item and font size is going to be 1.2 ram little big and we have to assign the color to our so this is the color code which i got from the design cff80b so that's the color for the text looking fine to me and from here i got the color if i open it and this is the color which i'm using okay looking fine come back to the code let's come down and we have to target the let's say nav bar middle sections we have to say background is going to be our primary color so one e one e one e so this is the primary color we are using we have to assign the width is 80 percent padding is going to be 1 ram and 0.5 ram border radius is going to be 0.5 ram let's provide margin zero auto everything will be that will hold everything in middle 
let's come down now we have to target the nav bar middle search it will have our display is going to be a flex justify content center and align item center gap is going to be two ram and cursor pointer so things will be in the middle come down we have to target the middle we have to target the input first thing we have to say background is going to be transparent remove the outline none remove the border none and we have to set the font size to one ram color is going to be our second primary color we have to target the nav bar box right and that's how it will look we have our left side looking good we have our menus and we have our search bar in the middle and now we have to work on the right hand sides this part so let's make it on 335 pixels 32 320 pixels first thing we have to target display is going to be a flex align item center justify content end and gap is going to be one ram nav bar box right box display is going to be flex align item center gap one ram background color our primary color padding 1.5 ram and 1.5 ram we have border radius 0.5 ram and cursor pointer text transformation capitalize that looks stunning let's come down we have to target the nav bar box right p font size 1.2 ram line height zero color is going to be our second primary and that's how it will look come down nav bar box right button background color is going to be primary one border none outline none and color our second primary and border is 0.5 ram padding one ram 1.2 ram and 1.5 ram font size 1.2 ram cursor pointer display is going to be flex align item center gap one ram that's how it will look everything's looking pretty beautiful let's make on a full screen and that's how it will look on a desktop so we have our left middle and the right side all these data are static type but we go to make it dynamic so that looks pretty good to me let's make it inspect element and let's start working on the responsive add media query only and We'll say max width 35 em we'll target the nav bar width is going to be 90 percent we'll target the nav bar box grid template column 0.5 ram and 1 fr that looks pretty good we have to target the nav bar box middle display none and we have to type bar the menu and display none so that's how it will look and actually i don't want to display the network that which network user is connected so let's hide that part as well so let's come here we have to target the nav bar right box and we have to still display none so that's how it will look on a mobile device we want to display only the icon and the addresses so things are looking good to me pretty good and let's check on the breakpoints so it's pretty good we're going to do a lot of things in this so for the time being that looks pretty good for the time being i'm not displaying the menus because the menu is not ready okay so when we build the menus and the pages on that time we're going to worry about the menu for the time being let's go like this so we are done with the css part simply come here and close this one